uh, good morning everyone welcome you back to the mset quantum system class <clears throat> now here uh, what i am uh, going to uh, do is that uh, i am to uh, here uh, i i am i am discussing about the modeling of the mechanical system see uh, in the previous classes or in the previous lectures what we have discussed we have discussed about the modeling of the electrical systems now uh, basically uh, in this module uh, we are we are continuing with the modeling of the different physical systems normally which are required uh, for uh, the industrial uh, modeling that means uh, the device modeling for the industrial purposes right so uh, when i am going to discuss about the modeling of the mechanical system first of all we have to know which are the major uh, say qualities or the uh, equipments or the elements which are required basically for the uh, you know uh, the modeling of the mechanical system like uh, electrical systems say so in electrical systems uh, what you have learned you have learned there are three basic parameters one is r one is l and one is c that means the resistance inductance and capacitors these are the three um, uh, qualities which actually is making a, an electrical network so like that there are also uh, normally uh, the three uh, 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 qualities uh, to describe any mechanical system. So uh, uh, you know the mechanical system uh, normally from the point of uh, mechanics you know there are two types of uh, systems are there. One is translational and one is rotational because when you will uh, uh, talk about the mechanical system there is the definitely related to the motions and uh, neutral uh, law applications of the neutral law and you know the term like free body diagram and d Lambert's principles uh, uh, that means the equilibrium of the force with respect to certain uh, point and all these things so uh, just we are going to discuss about the translation motion and uh, the analogy with the rotational motions can be automatically uh, established right so for translation and motion which are the basic uh, elements or the qualities required number one that is inertial mass which is denoted by m number two i can say it uh, spring and uh, what is uh, basically the mass is uh, denoted by like this this is a mass and say this is spring all you know the spring spring means uh, basically this is one kind of uh, uh, storage elements so which gives some restoring force when the force is withdrawn or the force is uh, uh, applied that means when the force is applied say for example the spring and the spring is connected with uh, uh, some rigid body here and in one side you are applying a force maybe you want to compress it maybe you want to expand it what happens this spring will try to oppose the motion and uh, normally this is uh, denoted by a constant spring constant that is k and third element which is uh, known as dashboard what is this basically dashboard is kind of uh, system which provides a damping to the system say uh, for example if you can consider the example of uh, two wheel motion or uh, two wheel motion four wheel motion single wheel motion uh, in automobile sector so there, uh, there is certain kind of shock absorber you may have heard the name like shock absorber what is the purpose of it shock absorber means when uh, you are moving uh, to some uh, road uh, with a, on, on the road so what happens uh, it may develop some shock and until unless the shock is absorbed what happens uh, you, you may not be uh, sitting comfortably on the seat of your uh, driven car uh, maybe two wheeler maybe three wheeler maybe four wheeler so there must be having some uh, kind of uh, damper that is symbolically denoted by this and uh, this damper basically this is provide damping to the system and this is denoted by a coefficient which is known as damping coefficient or sometimes for a uh, kind of liquid uh, uh, damping system uh, this is known as viscous coefficient this is also one kind of storage element which are used to uh, model the 
mechanical translation and motional uh, system. The motional system which is translational in nature. So mass spring and dashboard, the these are the, uh, the three basic elements. And uh, you know the uh, property of the spring is that whenever you have, to, you have applied any force uh, on the spring and the spring is displaced by x amount, then definitely displacement, say, I may say it x and this spring constant k is proportional to x you know it and the properties of this viscous coefficient is that whenever you are applying the same uh, force uh, f and corresponding to that you are getting the displacement x so this b will be proportional to the velocity or we may write dx of dt right so uh, this is your mass uh, that is inertial mass and uh, this is your spring and this is your dashboard so overall uh, any translational uh, mechanical system can be described by these three qualities mass spring and dashboard or damping and so the system normally constructed with these three elements will be known as mass spring damper system this is basic uh, configuration of uh, any uh, mechanical system and uh, any type of mechanical system uh, modeling uh, with respect to the industrial device can be possible with this help of uh, different combinations of different uh, mass spring damper system we, we will be discussing in uh, in a few minutes right so if i just uh, write down any model like this say mass spring dashboard system what is this uh, this is your suppose m this is your mass and uh, this is connected to some spring having spring constant k and this is connected to some damper element b it's like this you may apply force here or you may just uh, see this is the applied force this is the kind of a structure you may have in or you may uh, write and write this structure like this also somewhere you can find it like this is your spring uh, this is your damper b and this is your inertial mass connected where you are applying force f this is your applied force so this is the translational motion that means a linear motion so linear motion means uh, this kind of uh, um, mass and uh, damping coefficient and spring constant are there and the force is exerted here and for the rotational motion there will be certain uh, the shifting of this uh, like this spring will be same for rotational motion this spring will be uh, same uh, this b will be same uh, this mass will be your denoted by j which is moment of inertia in case of in case of rotational uh, motion we will consider this m as equivalent to that is quantity j that is moment of inertia and definitely you see this force will not be f uh, that will be t what is this this is nothing but torque all you know about this so basically once you uh, model this translational system with this help of mass spring damper and uh, a force is applied at any end of the, the system so you can just model this system analogous to this translational system which is rotational in nature and the quantities will be just uh, 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 just analogous like this force in case of uh, rotational system that is known as the torque and uh, you will see this is mass normal inertial mass in case of rotational motion is known as the moment of inertia that is denoted by j and <coughs> b is the uh, same uh, your damping coefficient or viscous friction coefficient and this is torsional spring constant this is known as the torsional spring constant because uh, this spring is not uh, been linearly moved that, that is same, same kind of um, uh, you know rotational in this spring so torsional rotation constant uh, uh, spring constant will be coming into the picture and <clears throat> one another thing is that whenever this kind of system you see so you are applying force here so definitely the displacement of the mass from its equilibrium position will be x right this is your displacement so when you will talk about the rotational motion so definitely that will not be the displacement x so rotation means there will be some degree that means angle so in case of rotational motion this displacement will be termed as theta this is angle or rotational angle so 
this is all about the uh, uh, basic qualities for rotational uh, system and translational system in mechanical uh, system now uh, next part i am going to discuss how this system say this is your mass spring damper system how this mass spring damper system constitute a second order system we already uh, are aware of the system known as the second order third order first order and type 0 type 1 all these things from the previous lectures now here what we we'll concentrate to develop the mathematical model actually uh, our aim is to get the modeling of the phys physical system that is mechanical in nature so for modeling of this system we have to just uh, get the dynamic equations governing this uh, system right so basic system is known as we can take it mass spring damper system so wait we are talking about this uh, uh, concept of mass spring damper system so you see this is mass spring and damper uh, so we can write the structure of this like you may connect the spring here next a damper b and next inertial mass m and here you are applying force f right and when you apply this force f what happens there will be certain displacement of this m with respect to its equilibrium positions now uh, if you just uh, go on uh, drawing the figure diagram once you have to get the dynamic equation that means the differential equations corresponding to that what you have to do we have to just get the free body diagram what does it mean you know all this fbd from the concept of mechanics and just we will use that free body diagram concept here what is this this is your m right so here at this side you are applying say force f right so whenever any force is applied to this mass m uh, due to its inertial mass m so definitely uh, there will be some uh, you know p is equal to mf or a physical to a f is equal to you know m into acceleration right so this acceleration means once you apply this force a what happens this will be displaced by x so displacement x means uh, you, you can see a physical to m into uh, dv dt that means rate of change of velocity and also you can write it d square x dt2 that means the same displacement x will be having the velocity part v right so once you apply the force so definitely there will be some velocity generated in this uh, end and corresponding to that you get m dt2 x dt square that is the uh, actual force uh, developed due to the inertial mass and this force will try to oppose this because of the uh, concept of uh, inertia so what is the opposing force well, opposing force will be just uh, in the reverse direction so that will be denoted by m d2 x dt2 m d2 is dt2 uh, and uh, you see there are other two forces k when x is displaced in this direction so downward direction what happens so k the spring will try to oppose this motion so what is the force corresponding to the spring that is k into x displacement so k into x so uh, the spring constant is proportional to x and k x is the force developed which is in this uh, direction and similar to you know this viscous damping coefficient which is proportional to the velocity so definitely what is the force that force is also opposing in nature and uh, these two are also the storage elements so here you see b dx dt so this is your free body diagram now from this free body diagram what you can uh, say is that uh, uh, you know the concept of d alembert's principle right uh, somewhere this is known as uh, d alembert's so d alembert's principle or d alembert's principle what is that 
basically we are not going to discuss about the dynamic principle in detail in this lecture we are going to get the mathematical modeling of any mechanical system right so mechanical mechanical uh, mathematical modeling of the mass spin damper system you see from here what we see with respect to this equilibrium positions what are the different directions of the forces we will consider each of the forces which is directly outward direction as the positive as simple as that so we will consider in our study to, uh, to uh, uh, keep in mind uh, uh, that that will be easier to keep in mind what is that that is force outward direction is taken as positive right similarly force inward direction is taken as negative these are the two simple thing we have to keep in mind only nothing else so from this fever diagram what do you see what are the total uh, amount of forces directed outside uh, outward uh, in that uh, in this section upward direction so what is the total forces the total forces m d2 x dt2 plus d dx dt plus k into x right so and what is the force uh, that is again uh, directed outside of this mass uh, and this is just opposite to the uh, that is the in, the in the bottom side that is downward direction this is the force that is also the outside direction outside direction means with respect to this whether this force is going out or force is going in applied in or applied in the outside direction so this is the force which is again positive because this is outwardly directed and this is one force now uh, according to de almert's principle in order to make the system in equilibrium this mass in equilibrium what is uh, to be done as total forces will be balanced so this is the force outward direction force along the upward direction uh, this is the total force in the downward direction this is also outward direction so this is to be taken as positive right so m d2 x dt square plus b d x dt plus k x will be equal to m right so this is the mathematical equation or dynamical equations of the uh, mass spin damper system now uh, from this system what we have to do we have to get the transfer function because in the uh, uh, concept uh, uh, in the uh, context of control system engineering we have to get the transfer function means what does it means transfer function what does it mean it means that whenever certain kind of input is applied corresponding to that system that is denoted by transfer function will give you certain kind of output right so here we have to identify which is the input and what are the output what is the input you see force you are applying force right this is your input and what is the output what you are getting actually you get the system is moved by certain displacement x that means what the input is x and output is sorry input is f force so this is your input and x is the output so whenever we are going to get the transfer function of it what we want to get we want to get nothing but that is output x of s Lavalas transform of output divided by Lavalas transform of input that is displacement by force so this is your transfer function so once you want to get this this is the governing equation that is the dynamical equation and from the differential equation what you, what you have to do you have to just take the Lavalas transform of both sides right so you want to take the Lavalas transform on both sides what we will get we will get say m into s square axis because this is second order derivative plus b this is first order derivative of x so this will be s into xt xt is your output in time domain so this will be x of s plus k is constant x of s is equal to your f of s as simple as that and once you get the level transform on both sides you get a algebraic uh, just equations where you can get x is m s square plus b s plus k 
equal to your FS. So from here, what you have to get that is your GS transfer function means output XS divided by FS. XS by FS is equal to 1 upon MS square plus BS plus K. See, this is your transfer function you get. So from the uh, mathematical modeling, what we have learned, we have learned from the uh, from the use of Newton's uh, law of motions by use of free body diagram concept. Uh, by using the dl numbers principle, you have to balance all these equilibrium forces, and ultimately a differential equations consisting of different elements like mass, spring, and damper, and output and input you will get. Once you will get, then after the Lambda transform of this uh, overall dynamic that means the differential equation you get the transfer function that is output levelless input levelless when initial conditions is zero so this is the uh, uh, transfer functions of the mass spring damper system that is corresponding to the mathematical uh, mechanical system you are getting these transfer functions what is this you see the order of the power power of the is highest power what is this s square that means this is a second order system right so this is a mechanical system having second order uh, system characteristics and from the concept of electrical system modeling what you have learned you have learned for rlc either series or parallel this is also second order system so these three elements corresponds to electrical network m b and k this corresponds to mechanical system right so this is again second order system this is again second order system so different differently different uh, there will be certain uh, analogy or you may call uh, the uh, the similarity between these two types of system because once you connect this rlc in series combination or you can connect this in uh, parallel combination what will get a second order system similarly once you uh, uh, connect this mass spring damper system in a certain way so you get a second order system so these two systems are known as the analogous system analogous system means there is correspondence between these two systems and what is the advantage of having the analogous system that i will discuss in the uh, later later classes next classes and uh, here in the next part of this lecture uh, next part of the lecture i am going to give some uh, uh, mathematical modeling of, of uh, more uh, systems more mechanical systems right uh, thank you and, uh, and in the next class you will follow to get understanding and get under, uh, get uh, familiar with the mathematical modeling of uh, some more mechanical systems